Okay, so uh, I, this is something I've been meaning to do for a while. I, I often get asked when I'm at shows and stuff, and um, by people at the local club and, and all the rest of it, uh, what paints I use, and what's the difference between the different types of paint. So I just thought I'd run through, nice and simply, on what the different types of paint are. So here you can see I've got a whole collection of paints. This is uh, all the different paints I have in my collection that I may use from time to time. So we're... Uh, run through one by one and then and then look at the different uses and the different things you need to have in mind when you come to use them. So let's start right at um, one uh, end of the spectrum then. So I would class these as being as um, as far on their own in the range of paints that I use uh, as you're going to get. So I think everyone's familiar with this. You've got the humble tin of enamel and humble enamel thinners. Now this is a paint that is, um, I suppose it has some of the, a mix of the two properties. So basically what we're going to be looking at is acrylics, lacquers and enamels. I'm not going to get into the science behind it. If you want to know that, then, you know, there's plenty of information out there. This is more just a, from a practical point of view, uh, as you know, if I start going into the science behind it, one, I don't know it enough and two, um, I'll probably lose half of you. We just want to chuck this paint in an airbrush and make it work. Um, that's the other point, this is from an airbrushing point of view. So, now enamel um, can be a bit of an issue because, simply because some of the uh, weathering um, sequences and the, some of the washes that are used can be enamel based. So you start getting into problems where some of the stuff can eat into enamel. Um, white spirit I've had uh, problems before for instance and when we use oil thinners you start crossing over. So if we keep enamels right at the um, far end. Now I do use these occasionally especially when something like this. This is for a red arrows hawk um, and this is a specific colour that um, a group of us are building a hawk and we've all decided that we're going to paint it this colour. So with this in mind, you just want to bear in mind with enamels that you need to put down sort of um, layer coats be between weathering processes and stuff would be the best way to go using like an acrylic based um, barrier. So something like clear and all of the rest of it. Um, as far as actually um, application, it's no different to anything else. You use the correct thinners, you need enamel thinners. It's all very smelly. I would recommend not even attempting to spray this in a small room unless you've got both a spray booth and a uh, paint mask. And I found this to be uh, absolutely fine stuff to go down. It's perfectly uh, no issue. I've used this with enamel thinners, apart from the smell. Um, it, go, I, it seems to go down quite wet. Obviously that depends on how much you thin it, but I find it goes down quite wet looking and as it dries back it gives you the same effect as if you were to use like an acrylic paint or a lacquer paint using a self-leveling uh, self thinner, which is a, a slow setting thinner. It's got a retarder in it. So I find these are very useful. Uh, need to be mixed well. Sometimes even need to be sort of um, not sieved so much, but you need to make sure there's no debris in the in the paint pot because you can easily easily get flakes in there. So I do use these rarely, usually specifically for a reason, and I use humble enamels to go with the humble tin. So that's the first thing. So keeping enamels, if we say enamels are on one far side of the spectrum, uh, let's go to the um, the other side, and that would be proper acrylics. Now I say proper acrylics, and just to try not to confuse anyone, um, proper acrylics are, i.e. a water-based acrylic paint. That means if you were to use something like a cellulose thinner or even the X20A thinner that... Um, Tamiya use, you'll find that it won't thin this correctly, you'll, you'll get sort of a, a gloopy kind of mix. Um, so anything like Vallejo, you've got Model Air, Model Colour, any of the Game Colour, Citadel, um, Humbrol Acrylics, any of that type of thing. It's a water-based paint, that is an acrylic paint. For that you need to use acrylic thinners. Here I've got um, a, an old bottle of uh, Humbrol acrylic thinners, uh, there's Vallejo do acrylic thinners, almost every paint brand does their own acrylic thinners. As long as it's a thinner specifically used for acrylic you will have no problem. Um, some things you tend to run into with this is um, certainly with Vallejo for instance you can get a kind of peeling effect. It's they can be sort of polyurethane based I think it's called and um, I tend to find they, they peel off uh, on occasion I've had um, when you're masking and stuff so you just want to keep an arm on that usually go well over a good hard primer coat which can sometimes be a lacquer or a lacquer based product so like a spray can primer 
they usually go down quite well. Very good for brush painting. In fact, brush painting for any detail or figure painting or anything, I actually use these sort of paints. Um, certainly the Citadel ones, I'd say they're almost the best. Mixing them with a bit of water, getting them moving, um, and nice and fluid before applying them. I've used this purple to no problem with this thinner uh, for rudders on some of the um, uh, Spanish Civil War aircraft I've done and <coughs> that's been no problem although I've moved away from this now and use a uh, Tamiya based product. So if we put acrylics at say the lowest end of the what, how do, shall I describe this? Uh, like sort of um, strength, the strength of the paint. So I toxicity, the smell, all the rest of it for eating into things and, and everything like that. If we say acrylic are the most um, non-offensive paint, uh, as far as taking precautions for spraying and stuff, you're only really looking at not getting the particles, you know, breathing in the particles. There's not really any any toxins, although I would never. This bear this in mind. I would never spray anything without wearing a face mask and using a paint proof, spray spray proof. So bear that in mind. But these are the uh, least toxic paints and uh, the safest to use. And that's uh, with acrylic thinner. So that's those. Now we start to get a little bit complicated because we move into lacquer-based acrylics and lacquers. So here I've got three pots of paint, which um, I expect all of you are very uh, aware of these paints. You've got Tamiya paints, uh, Mr. Hobby Aqueous, and then Mr. Color. So let's not complicate things. Let's take Tamiya out of the way at the minute. So let's take the two Mr. Hobby ones that can be confusing in time. These are both made by the same brand. They are two different types of paint. So you've got the Mr. Color brand and the Mr. Hobby Aqueous. And the Mr. Hobby Aqueous is almost identical to the type of paint that you get in Tamiya pots. It's a lacquer based acrylic, which means it will work with both uh, sides of it. So you can fin it with um, acrylic thinners, you can fin it with water and that will work. You can also fin it with Tamiya X20A thinner and you can also use Mr. Color leveling thinner which is a cellulose based thinner. Um, they're pretty good with anything. And um, thin best, I would say for spraying, you really want to be using um, this stuff. If you can get away with the smell, i.e. using a spray booth, if you're not, you know, you're not worried about being in a, a confined space and all the rest of it, and you've got good ventilation, then I would move over to this stuff. Uh, this is a thinner that has a retarder in it, so it has a slower drying time, which gives the paint longer to, um, level out and dry before it actually starts to dry off so you get a much smoother finish and it sinks into the details a lot better. That's the reason behind that. So with that thinner you can use that in both of these and this. Now lacquer paints like I just described are you know they, they are quite smelly um, but I feel as though they give the best result out of a bottle and they come in many different forms so this is the Mr. Colour lacquer paint this is MRP which I use Probably this is my go-to paint. This is a pre-finned lacquer paint. So it's the same stuff, it's just been finned. And um, it seems as though online, most people seem to think it's finned pretty much with this or a very similar product. So you get exactly the same effect. Uh, obviously you've got to bear in mind that you're getting less paint for your pound in here. This is 10 mil, this is 30 mil, but as this is pre-finned, and it, it proves out to be more expensive than these. If you bear that in mind, obviously you could probably thin this and go further than this bottle will thin, if that makes sense. Uh, however, I don't care about that because they're thin to such a great consistency. They just work, they're, they're almost like um, a sort of ink, the way they go down. So you've got to have very low air pressure, but you can do um, really nice camo patterns, really tight work with these. And I find them very good. Alclad would be a very similar product. So I would say these are um, uh, lacquer based metalizers and um, all of the same thing. I would almost describe these two products as the same type of paint um, in the sense of when you're working with them, um, all the things that you know about Alkalad, like making sure the, su the surface is uh, very smooth and you don't have any filler issues and you don't have any uh, rough areas because they show up. The same applies for this. I find that this or this shows anything up as well. So you need to be working really cleanly on your building. It has no filler properties or microfilling properties. Whereas these, if you mix a bit of a heavier pigmented mix, then it has a microfiller 
property therefore it will sort of feel any scratches or um, be a bit more forgiving when it comes to uh, slight blemishes on the uh, model. So just bear that in mind. Let me go into thinners. Oh, uh, one last thing to mention is you'll also see these. Now, these are good sets that a lot of people pick up, but um, just to highlight, if you are working in the um, Hobby Acquies range and you pick these up, these are actually the lacquer base range in these box sets. So just bear that in mind. For Mr. Colour, that is the lacquer base set. So um, just in case any of you guys have bought these and thought the paint is different, that's because it is. It will be in the Mr. Colour range, so it's a pure lacquer. So just bear that in mind if you're looking at any of these sets. But otherwise, these are extremely good. So this is an interior set for US aircraft. Also got the um, Pacific aircraft set as well. And uh, they're very useful and very good colour matches. Then we go on to thinners. So thinners for the two, um, well, for the any of the lacquer-based paints, you can use either of these. Now, I used to use this for cleaning out the airbrush, uh, but I've since realised I'm just, you know, there's no point buying that, whereas I could just use this for, for both. So I actually clean through the airbrush with this. I know I can do this a lot cheaper. You could go and get hardware store um, cellulose thinner. I just prefer the convenience of it, to be honest. So um, I use this. This is about £10 a bottle. Lasts me, I don't know, two or three months, and um, that's perfectly good return for my £10, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and this is a thinner with a retarder in it, like I mentioned earlier, which gives you a slower drying time, which gives you a better, smoother finish. Now that's a very good product, and I would um, suggest and advise anyone who's you know pretty confident and capable of spraying paint to move on to this as soon as possible, because you'll just get a better finish from the word go. Um, if you're not confident or you can't deal with this, it, oh, that is very potent smelling wise, so bear that in mind. If you can't work with that, because I know a lot of people have issues with uh, partners not liking the smell or, or having children and pets and all the rest of it, or not, you know, not good ventilation, then this is a lot less smellier and a lot less um, potent. And... Um, this can be picked up anywhere, and this is the acrylic thinner. So this is the X20A, and that's important to have the X20A for the acrylic. And that will thin this, their Tamiya gloss, and um, the, so the XF and the X range. It will also thin this, which is the Mr. Hobby Aqueous. And I haven't tried it. I've got a feeling it will thin the acrylics, but I wouldn't advise it. I'd, I'd, I'd keep everything separate, like I mentioned. So... Just to recap, I would keep your acrylics, all your acrylic range using acrylic thinner, all of your enamel range use enamel thinners, and then all of your lacquer based range, which is all of these here, you can use cellulose based thinners. One point just to uh, make, the X20A will not thin the pure lacquer. So there's a bit of a crossover. If you think the X20A applies to the acrylic side of these two acrylic-based lacquers, or lacquer-based acrylics, and then this applies to both sides of it, then you're not going far wrong. So this will thin all of these here. So you can use this with all of those. You can use this. And you can use this with those. And that's what I use. That is not meant to be a, uh, a exhaustive guide on how to mix and thin paint and airbrush paint and all the rest of it. That is just answering the question of what I use, what I think's best, and um, I found works for me. And like I said, falling back on Tamiya, using Mr. Color, and then using MRP and Alkalads, all mixed with this, is my preferred choice. And I advise, I would, I would encourage anyone to give it a go and see if it works for you as well. If you're not using this Mr. Leveling Thinner here, Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner, then go out and grab some and see if it works for you. You can get it in smaller bottles if you just want to test your, test um, how it works. And I'm certain you will find that it will be absolutely superb for you. So hopefully that helps and answers a few questions. Let me know in the comments below if I've got anything wrong, which I inevitably have, and then I urge you to look at the comments just to check that uh, my terminology and everything's correct with what I've said. Um, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.